we're going to delve deeper into the formula editor for the select expert. Go ahead and click on the select expert icon, click on show formula, and then click on formula editor. Keep in mind we're just dealing with record selections at this point in time. This pulls up a basic record selection formula editor window. It's slightly different from the formula editor that you're used to because some functions will not be available and won't work as well with you here. You also have to keep in mind if you're going to use any of the functions which tend to be defined by crystal, the report will need to pull all the data for us, then crunch it, increasing your runtime. From here, you can do most any type of formula imaginable, within the rules of course. This means using and, or, in, between any of these, as long as the functions can be used with the fields you have chosen as your filters. At this level too, you also have the ability to pull any field even if you haven't pulled it into your report yet. For example, revenue transaction date is not actually physically shown on my report, but it is pulled into the background. Also keep that in mind. By pulling a field into the selection criteria, even if it doesn't show up in your report, it's the same as pulling it into the report itself, albeit in the background you're not able to see it. This has implications on the runtime of your report and what's going to be pulled back naturally. From here, you can also create all sorts of formulas. For example, instead of comparing revenue date back to a static date format that we captured, we can put this in parentheses. Delete this. And say the revenue transaction rev date minus the current date must be greater than zero. This is, a, this is a formula we learned from a prior lesson, but now instead of using it in the report itself, we are using it in the selection criteria. Of course, there's always the question of why you would want to do this. If it doesn't make sense to do it, obviously you wouldn't use this formula. But there may be cases where you need to calculate a number of days or a period or another figure that you want to filter by in your base data set. Let's see what this does. Also, you have your check formula button. Again, this will check your syntax, not the actual logic or business process that you're aiming for or that's specific to your database or company. Notice how this is going to go. It's going to look for Charlotte first, and then it must meet this condition where the revenue transaction date minus the current date must be greater than zero. We're going to save and close and press OK. In this case, we're going to refresh the data because we've changed the formula. Notice how, based on this new filter, we now get nothing. Again, this is one of the things you have to be careful with. If we're going to place a formula in there, it's good to understand what that formula is doing. In this case, the current date minus the revenue date will never be positive. Let's go back. If we look at our formula, you can also edit it in here, but I like going to the formula editor. If we reversed it instead, and put the current date first, check for errors, and press OK. We're going to hit save and close, and then press OK again. In this case, we're going to refresh our data. Notice how more items now show up. When working with the formula editor for the selection expert, you must be just as careful as working with your normal formulas that you pull into a report. You can also combine numbers or strings or any number of conditions that you can think of. The one thing you won't be able to do in this is the if-then statement. That requires something a little bit different. Keep in mind that the where clause is SQL and the if-then statement is what's known as crystal syntax. 